It's difficult being a young player in the NBA that doesn't quite find his footing in the league from the jump. The fans have high hopes that their lottery pick will help turn their team around, the coaching staff needs to be fully bought into your development, and patience can sometimes run thin a little too quick. In my last video, I discussed four young players that have finally started to dispel the narrative that they were draft busts this season behind some stellar play, but in today's video, we're unfortunately going to the opposite end of the spectrum. Spectrum. Specifically, we'll be discussing four more players, except this time, they are players that entered the season with pressure to take a step forward and are failing mightily at doing so, making the bust allegations even louder. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first player we'll be discussing that has been failing to beat the bust allegations this year is James Wiseman of the Detroit Pistons. Wiseman was notably the second selection in the 2020 NBA Draft by the Golden State Warriors, one pick ahead of LaMelo Ball, and he's just never been able to prove himself worthy of such value. He entered the league as a prospect that dropped out of college at Memphis after playing just three games with them in order to prepare for the draft on his own terms, so the tape we had on him playing against legitimately competitive competition going into the draft was very minimal, thus making him a bit of a mystery. Obviously, he looked the part as a 7-footer with the ideal physical tools, length, strength, and athleticism to theoretically develop into an elite center in the league, but the thing about basketball is that you actually have to put those tools to work on the court and turn it into production to establish yourself as an impactful player. I don't necessarily think think being drafted to a Warriors team still in the middle of contending for championships was the best landing spot for him to begin with, because he still had a long way to go as a player and his development was never going to be prioritized there, but that excuse no longer flies now that he's in Detroit. During training camp, it got reported that the Pistons' backup center job was up for grabs between Marvin Bagley and James Wiseman, and only one of them would be getting consistent minutes. Opening night came around, Marvin Bagley was the center that checked in for Jalen Duran off the bench, and Wiseman's fate seemed to be sealed in that moment. If he can't even win the backup center job on the worst team in the NBA, then the cold hard truth is that there isn't a situation in the world where he would thrive. He's always struggled defensively because he doesn't have the natural instincts or feel for the game that you need to be a great rim protector, and he's not enough of a game changer on offense to justify giving a lot of minutes to. The next player unfortunately failing to beat the bust allegations this season is Davion Mitchell of the Sacramento Kings. Mitchell was the 8th overall pick in the 2021 NBA Draft after his outstanding March Madness showing, helping his Baylor squad to win the championship that year, and at the time of the pick, it seemed like a reasonable fit that made sense. The Kings were in desperate need of defensive help, and Mitchell was labeled as the best perimeter defender in the class, who also shot the lights out throughout Baylor's championship run, so at the very least, he was expected to be a reliable 3 and D guard who could provide some shot creation and playmaking as well. Unfortunately for the Kings though, his shooting touch has completely eluded him through three seasons into his career, and if anything, his shooting struggles are getting worse as time goes on. As a rookie, he was getting more than his fair share of opportunities on a nightly basis, playing about 28 minutes per game off the bench, handling the ball a decent amount with the second unit, and flashing the occasional game where his playmaking potential was on display. He was still pretty inefficient, but almost all rookie guards are, so it wasn't time to panic yet. Then last season, the Kings brought in Kevin Herter and Malik Monk, who both play the same position as Mitchell, the team started to win a lot more, and his unreliable shooting stroke resulted in his minutes dwindling, despite still giving them solid defensive effort in the opportunities that he had. This season now, things are only heading even more downhill for him, as he's shooting a career-worst 28% from three, he's playing the fewest minutes per game of his career, including several games where he doesn't even get to play at all through coach's decision, and it's starting to look like he could end up on the trade block, hoping to turn his career around elsewhere. 
The next player failing to beat the bust allegations this season is Zaire Williams of the Memphis Grizzlies. Williams was actually drafted one pick after Davion Mitchell back in 2021, and unfortunately, he's been experiencing a pretty similar fate as well. Williams was a highly touted high school recruit who played one season at Stanford in college and had pretty mixed results in his time there. He was still able to be selected in the top 10 of the draft almost purely because of his quote unquote upside as a prospect because nothing he had actually shown on a basketball court to that point warranted him being selected that early on. While sometimes you get the mega success stories of a raw prospect developing into something great like Kawhi Leonard and Giannis Antetokounmpo, you tend to get way more cases of guys that fall into the category who flame out and never reach that potential, and it's looking like Williams is quickly headed towards the latter. The appeal of Williams as a talent comes from his impressive athleticism because he can really run the floor well and soar around the basket for high-flying finishes, but unfortunately he's just never been able to be an effective scorer in any capacity, and his presence on the court has actually been sabotaging the Grizzlies. With Ja Morant out and countless other key players sustaining injuries early on this season for them, he's been getting the chance to start for the Grizzlies. But the team is actually statistically at their worst in the minutes that he is on the court, becoming a whopping 12.7 points worse per 100 possessions compared to when he is on the bench. He's scoring just 8 points per game, shooting the ball 38% from the field, and he's a negative pretty much across the board. So unfortunately, as a third year player, that just isn't good enough to inspire long term confidence. And finally, the last player we'll be discussing today that has not beaten the bust allegations this year is Johnny Davis of the Washington Wizards. This is just Davis's second season, but his rookie year was such a disaster that he was put on fraud watch a little earlier than usual. Davis was selected 10th overall in the 2022 NBA Draft because of the fact that he was one of the best pure scoring prospects in the draft class. He was coming off of a season where he scored about 20 points per game for Wisconsin and the departure of Bradley Beal seemed to be looming in Washington, so bringing in a potential replacement for the future made sense. Davis, however, does not seem to be the Bradley Beal replacement for their future or anything close to it. I don't know what happened between the end of his college career and the start of his NBA career, but his jump shot is now completely broken somehow, he's not anywhere close to being an effective scorer at this level, and he's not even able to break into the rotation of one of the worst teams in the NBA. NBA, which the Wizards absolutely are. What's even worse is that when he was playing in the G League last season, he wasn't even playing all that well down there either, so you can understand why he can't get minutes at the NBA level. He's the one getting the short end of the stick on a bad team motivated to play their young guys and give them run, so even though it's still very early, he's looking like a waste of a top 10 pick. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about these players that are failing to break out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.